All right, we're back. This would be video 26 of the Blue Nose build. Um, almost didn't get this one made. <laughs> I, at the beginning of me building this model, I was moving along so fast that I had uh, sometimes two or three videos already made up waiting to be downloaded. So I was, I was ahead. And I always like staying ahead, having me a video in the background waiting to be uploaded while I do another video. Well, I've got to the point now where I'm doing things and making the video and I don't have none in reserve. And today is Thursday and I'll probably be uploading this one Saturday. So uh, I've got a, quite a few things to show you. And once again, we're going to probably have a long video. Um, I, I know, in the, I think it was the last video, I, I, I apologize for my videos being so long. And uh, one of the reasons being is my face-to-face -face time with you. And, and I like to talk too much. And my son has already told me, Dad, you talk too much. You know, but what do kids know? Um, you know, i got to do my thing. You know, that's all I can say. And uh, th there's things I talk about that pertain to this ship, and I, I sometimes, I feel they're important, and they got to get out there. So, uh, and then there's other times, like what I'm about to show you, doesn't really pertain to the ship, but to let you know how my progress is going with uh, different things. It pertains to the videos. So, with this being said... I, you know, well, you know how life goes. You can't please everybody. <laughs> so I'm here to please myself. All right. Let me let me uh, show you something I got going on here that I'm working on. I've been using this little Sony Handycam, and I think the videos come out fairly decent. They're they're not bad. Um, but I I've had for a, a few years, and I never really use it. Because I really don't care for the quality of the pictures I get and that is this here uh, Nikon all right it's a cool Pix 100 now this thing will shoot video in HD and I was messing with it and I'll tell you what the clarity of an HD video is far surpasses what I got and I think I got uh, fairly decent little videos with that camera but to take a picture with this thing, I get much better pictures with this little bitty thing here. Okay. This here is, is you know, if you don't use it that much, it would be a pain in the ass. But the main problem with this camera is I can't see what you're seeing. The back part of it here folds out. Okay, like that. But it won't swing around so I can see what's going on and that I got things in focus. So I'm working on a, uh, a little project here. I bought me a new cable for it and I'm trying to hook it into my computer, my laptop, so I can see on my laptop what you're seeing. But uh, we're having a little problem. My son's helping me with it. I think we got to download it some software in order to make that work. I don't want to do live streaming with it. I see there's a lot of downloads you can do for that. I just want to get it to where I can plug it into my laptop and see on my laptop what you're seeing. Okay, so maybe in the future we'll have some HD video. Now, uh, in my last one I also I talked about, the last video I did, I talked about my little boats, the little small boats I'm calling them. Uh, I called them a dinghy. Uh, I believe, I can't remember, I think it was Steve, I'm not sure, who corrected me and said no they're a dory. Okay, well you know me. I looked it up in the dictionary. Alright, so let me find this here. A dinghy. It says it is a small boat powered by sails or oars and it's usually used as a lifeboat or a pleasure craft on a larger boat eh, eh, maybe 
Now, Dory. Let me find that one. Okay, a small, narrow, flat bottom fishing boat with high sides and a sharp prow. All right, it's a dory. I think it's six one way, half a dozen the other. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. To me, it's a small boat. All right. <coughs> so, I've been quite busy this past, uh, it, it's been almost two weeks since I video did that last video. And by the time I got it up, now it's a week later. So, in the past almost two weeks, I've been busy working on these masts. Uh, took me a while, and I'm going to show you them, and I'm going to get you a close-up and, and show you from the bottom on up what I did and how I did it. Uh, I've got one of my little life lifeboats or small boats, 95% done. i got to make some oars and stuff for it. And some other little things I want to talk about and show you. So uh, let me get the camera turned around here and down on the desk. And uh, we're not really going to be seeing too much of the ship. Today is mostly about the mast. But I got some other things I do want to talk about. All right, so let me get the camera turned around. Okay, so here we are. Got my pointer ready. Got it this time. Um, First of all, let me talk about these little signs. I made these up, two of them. All right, there they are. These go up on the bow of the ship, on the side, right there. And you see that? That is with those three millimeter letter letters that I got from uh, model flags or whatever over in England alright no little fancy design on either side uh, after I done this I thought well you know it's too late now but that's my two little signs that will go up in the bow of the ship alright they turned out pretty nice alright so we got that out of the way now about two videos ago I talked about the anchors and was asking for some help. What do I do with those anchors? Uh, got a couple suggestions. One of them was don't even use them. And I, I believe when she was racing, she stripped the deck of, of a lot of stuff. And probably, most likely, the anchors were one of the things that were taken off. So, you know, I, I prefer to try and get them on there. I, I like them. I think they're nice. But I, like I said, I think this is way too long. So, I sat out there one night and I started going through a bunch more pictures on that Nova Scotia archives that I talked about. And I found two pictures in there of the Blue Nose with anchors on the ship. And one of the pictures shows uh, it's from 1933. The Blue Nose is moored in Toronto Harbor. Now, the nice thing about this website is when you pull up a picture, they allow you to zoom in out on it. And I would show this to you, but I don't think it would show up very good because even when you zoom in, it's hard to see the anchor. And I'm looking at it right now on my uh, laptop here. And I can see this anchor on the uh, starboard side. It is up on the rail. It's laying on top of that rail. This is the rail. The anchor is laying on the top of that rail like this. If you get my drift. Alright. And this is hanging over the side. Now the interesting thing about the picture is it does not have this piece of wood. Uh, it what it has is, and it is showing it as plain as day. I can see it. It has like that piece of pipe. Okay, if I can draw this and you can see this, comes up and bends over. It's got a ball on either end. Okay, and then here's your anchor, and you see what I'm drawing there. And that's what they're showing on that picture. Of 1933 so is this piece of wood correct 
was it on there when it first when the ship was first launched I don't know so I might and I say might be making one of these so we'll see how that comes I don't know yet I'm not sure all right so that's the anchor at least I know how it is positioned on the side of that ship and uh, know what it looks like it is like I said lashed up on that main rail up in the bow like that okay so now I know what to do with the anchor all right let's move on let me close my laptop down here but like I said you want some of the best pictures of the original blue nose you gotta go to that Nova Scotia website all right my paper what I'm talking about all right let's get into these uh, small boats what I done with mine is I went ahead and I planked the side of it I used I cut up one of the other ones uh, remember I told you I had so many of them and I used some of the scrap that came from the, the one that I did build and I was able to plank the side of that ship or a little small boat all right and I noticed when I flipped one of them uh, patterns over that on the back of it it said that this wood that they were giving you was mahogany well now you know me I got an exotic wood or walnut or something I'm not gonna paint it so I went ahead and stained this I stained the side of it with this uh, Minwax Golden Oak which darkened it up a little bit alright so that looks nice to me I can live with that uh, it's planked looks pretty nice then I didn't know what to do with the interior of it so I painted it gray I went with a gray I didn't want to go with some of these wild colors I've seen these things painted yellow and green and and all kinds of strange colors and I, I was trying to avoid that so I went with this gray uh, I didn't want to take away I didn't want when you look at the ship your eyes automatically go to this little ship so you know I went with a gray it's subtle and uh, I think it looks halfway decent now this is not set in stone but it right now I like it and here's another color to add to the list this was a Tamiya XF 55 that is the gray that I used on the inside side of this little ship and you can see what I did I laid little boards down in, in the bottom then I, I took little thin strips of wood laid on top of that and then I took the same little thin strips of wood and put along the side along the side on both sides in here and then put down the seats and this little part and and this you know a lot this is not what it calls for actually in the plans nor what I seen in the pictures but this is my version and I kinda like it now I like I said it's about 95 percent done I want to put uh, a little rope up here that, that goes on the bow and a little rope back here and I still got to make some little oars and uh, a little small sail I think I'll lay in there all right now as far as just putting it on the ship I've looked at a lot of pictures on this website and a lot of pictures of it when it's out sailing and if you zoom in on it I only see one of these on the ship most of the pictures I've seen they only have one on the ship now there is one scene where they were taking a bunch of pictures of the ship because she was in such bad state of repair and they show three of them stacked on top of each other so you would take the next one stack it in there like that and then another one on top now I seen that I don't like that I'm not gonna do that alright so I think I'm just gonna put one of these on the deck of the ship now I did build another one I have not planked it yet but I will and I think what I'm gonna do with this and this is my idea and I, I, I 
I would probably do this. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I would probably do it. I'm going to fix this one up and, and set a sail up on it. And when I display my ship, I'll set this one on the, on the, uh, right next to it, on the base, you know. So I'll have my big model there, and I'll have this little, uh, small ship sitting right next to it with the sail up ready to go so I think that's an idea and I might go with that so I'll have one on the deck and one that on the display alright so got that out of the way alright uh, let me look and see what else I got small boats display bays talking about alright let me get into the uh, mast. Let me bring them over here and uh, we'll talk about them and I'll show you some halfway decent close-ups of, of how I did things. Alright, we're back. Here's my two masts. Uh, four mast and the main mast. Now this main mast took me about three days to do this. Let me flip the lens around thing here so I can see that I'm showing you stuff. Took me about three days to do this one. I had about 20 hours into this thing. Uh, and since most of the, the two are the same, pretty much, once I got the hang of this, I was able to do this one and about day and a half, two days. So I cut it down by a day. Um, I did find some mistakes in the plans. So you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. And I'm going to show you them in just a second. The two mistakes I found. But uh, you can see here, and I'll, once I get started on this, I'll bring you in real close and work my way from the bottom up. But you can see here, where I used that brass tubing for this stuff, okay, instead of making them out of that strip uh, brass that they gave you, I made this with that brass tubing. Just had the right size, right there's a piece, and it fits on there like that, you know, you, you can cut it. And I cut most of them, uh, three millimeters. I tried to stay around three millimeters on most of them. You know, it's a little hard to cut with that saw. I think I ruined that little saw I had uh, cutting this brass. And I cut it in that little miter box that I had. And, you know, it was, it was a little tough trying to get through it with that little thing and to get them perfectly all the same size because there's a little bit of a, a uh, distance in where that saw fits in that groove but for the most part they came out really really nice I'm really happy with them but let me before we get started let me take you over and show you the mistakes I found on the plans and also before I do that if you remember my bow sprint how on the very tip of it their plans call for three ears on that very first one. Well, look at what they got in the book here, in their book of directions. They got four ears, which is what I went with. Remember I told you they're supposed to be a staple down here? Well, you know, they're not consistent between what they're showing you in the book and what's on the plans. So you pretty much got to use your head and, and do your thing you know so what I done was I went with the four ears which I liked it better I like that idea better and then here it is I show it in the book alright so let me take the camera off the tripod take you over here and show you the mistakes I found on building this mask okay so I have two sets of plans folded up and laid out here and uh, this one here is sheet number four 
and this other one is sheet number six. What I'm looking at is right here. Now this goes on the top of the, how do I explain this? The top of the bottom part of the main mast, okay? This is the main mast. And this is the little thing that goes here and holds the top part of the other mast, holds them together. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, this little thing here, if you can read that, it says port side, all right, port side. They're showing it on the starboard side. Okay, when you make this, this is towards the front. This would be the starboard side. That's where it's at, but they're telling you the port side. All right, so we go over here to the other set of plans. And right here it is. Now it says starboard side. And that's where they're showing it. Starboard side. So on that other sheet of plans it says port. On this sheet of plans it says starboard. So you have to pay attention to that. And it's the same thing. Let me go slow so you don't get sick. Over here it's the same thing on the uh, foremast they're telling you starboard side on that extra little link but they're showing it on the port side we go over here to the other set of plans okay remember I said it should be on the port side because that's the way they're showing it now this is turned around this is facing the opposite direction and there it is that little link and it does say port side Alright, so pay attention to what you're doing. Look at both sheet of plans in order to put all this together. Because, you know, this was a treat trying to figure out how many bands I need, where the eye hooks need to be, what all this stuff up here is. And uh, it was a little complicated. Let me see if I can show you this over here. Let me go slow. Because this is not very clear right here, what they got. This is a metal loop that comes down, loops around, comes back up on the other side. And then this little piece right here sticking down is two little pieces of, of uh, metal or whatever you want to call it with a hoop on either end. And there's one of them on each side. But this is not very clear what they're showing you here. Okay? You see a better description of it over here on the other sheet of plans of that piece I'm talking about, that extra piece that comes down. Alright, so there is some mistakes on here. So the only thing I can tell you is watch, work off of both sheets of plans plus the other sheet of plans that gives you some of the rigging and shows you what's going on so you really got to pay attention to when you're putting these masts together alright so let's get back over to the mast alright um, you got some things here you really need to watch out for not only do you have to watch out for their mistakes but you have got some other things going on here you have to pay attention to um, and let's start with this you remember way back when I cut these little rings out here out of this this wood and that's them little rings right there okay for your sails um, if you count them up on the plans I believe the main mast if I remember this right now gets 22 because they're telling you the bottom two get doubled up and then the four mass gets 19 so how about it 19 and 22 that's 41 what do they give you 40 duh alright and then the smaller ones I believe you wind up with one over so you know, once again, quality control. 
Um, let me let me say something about these. You can see right here they cut these little rings out, okay, with the laser cut thing. All right, so they can cut a circle. Now, when it comes to this stuff down here on the bottom, and I don't know what they call it, but this little thing right here down on the bottom, all right. That comes in two halves. And you, you're supposed to set them two halves together around the bottom of that mass. All right? Now, if you can cut these out in circles, okay, what's the problem? You can't cut that out in the whole circle? And the problem is they don't fit. They're too big. You put the two halves together, and there's a gap in between uh, the mast and the inside diameter of this. Now, I tried cutting it down, you know, cutting down the edges of them and drawing them in. Well, that works fine on two of the four sides. So what I done on the one here, on this one here, is I took a, one of these brass rings that I made, slipped it on there, and then took the two halves and put it on there and that filled up that gap that that made that inside diameter fit so this one here has got one of these brass rings underneath of it in order to get it to fit on there now the four mask is different I had to hand make that one and I'll get to that in a second so let me get this out of the way oh yeah while we're talking about these rings, okay, they are laser cut, okay. Now what happens is, when they laser cut that, where it burns the wood, turns it into like a charcoal. Don't make this mistake. I put this first set of rings on there, and next thing I know, I had black marks all up and down my mask from where the inside of these rings like I said were like charcoal and they just they, they were ruining my mask it was just leaving black marks all over it so what I had to do since I already had them on there is I took a piece of sandpaper took that piece of sandpaper and wrapped it around my mask okay had to, had to trim this so it was just right slip them rings up onto that piece of sandpaper and then twisted them all together on that sandpaper to sand the inside diameter so I could get rid of that charcoal effect. And before I put them on my uh, foremast, I did it on a piece of uh, tubing. You know, I just found a piece of tubing or a piece of this dowel rod that I cut off and I wrapped that sandpaper around there. And it's much easier doing them all at once than trying to do them individually. You get them all stacked up together around that piece of sandpaper and you just keep going back and forth like that and it sands the inside, cleans it off. Otherwise you're going to have charcoal marks all over the inside. And then when I had them stacked like that, I also went across the outside and sanded that a little bit. Okay. Now I believe I'm just going to leave them like they are. I want that wood effect. Um, I don't know what else to do and I'm not going to take the time to paint each and every one of them white or whatever. Okay, now we got that part straightened out. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and bring it down here. I think it's much easier to see it. Uh, it focuses in much better that way than uh, having it up there. So hang on a second. Let me get this set up. Okay, we're going to try this again. Um, I tried taking the camera off and holding it by hand and showing you these masks and the different parts of them and what I had to do. And I was just all over the place with the camera because I can get you a much better zoom by holding the camera here than uh, about three or four feet away trying to zoom in. Because I got a little about three and a half inch square here that I have to stay in so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so here's the main mast. 
Uh, this right here is that bottom piece, like I was talking about, where the two pieces go together. Instead of them cutting you one ring, they cut you two halves. And like I said, it was too big for this mask. So I got a piece of this little uh, brass ring here underneath that to fill in that gap. Alright? Now, that's a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around there. This is only on the main mask. It is not on the foremast. Uh, they want you to cut a groove in here and take that brass strip and lay that brass strip in a groove around there. Well, good luck. Go ahead if you want to. <laughs> what I done is I just took a file and uh, I had like this triangular file and I just cut a little small groove all the way around and I put a piece of copper wire in there. I, you know, I don't think it's worth it. I didn't do it on the other one, on the four mast. Because it, I don't know. <laughs> I can understand their reasoning and why it's done, but when you get to this small, you're talking this, this here piece of uh, circle that they want you to cut out, that's only two millimeters wide right there. And you go cutting a groove in that, you, you know, you're, you're really getting down to some thin wood. All right, so moving along, you can see I got my rings on there. Do not forget your rings. Uh, if you forget to put them on and you got this on there, you're going to be tearing one of these things, something apart. So don't forget your rings. Okay, moving on up. I, have to, I can see I'm going to have to move some stuff out of the way. Alright. My brass rings, all these brass rings I got here, that is what I said I cut here. I cut this out of this brass tubing. I tried to make them all about three millimeters, which was a little tough. Some of them might be a little off here and there, but I got them done. Probably ruined my little saw cutting this brass in that little miter box. But I cut a bunch of brass rings. Now most of these only had one little eye hook on it. So I drilled into the edge of this brass ring. Okay, with my drill. Drilled a hole in it. And then I took this brass ring, slid it on down into its position, slid that brass ring down to where it belonged, had that hole drilled in there. So I drilled through the hole that was there into the mast, and then I epoxied in my little eye hooks. And I also epoxy, put a little dab of epoxy when I slipped that ring down onto there. Put a little dab of epoxy on the main mast, put that ring there, and then drill that hole, epoxy that pin in, and it's there forever. Now, this one here that I had the special make, this piece, I did have to solder that one together. Bring it on down. This is a one millimeter brass rod that would be this right here okay one millimeter brass rod bent it brought it on down and made a, a hook in the end of it okay and then I had to slip snip a little piece off and solder that on the edge of it so I could put it into the mast and I also have a little ring on here they call for a little ring on there okay now that is supposed to go all the way through, but it doesn't. goes about halfway. I turned it over, drilled a small hole, and put an eye hook in there. All right. Now that uh, eighth inch stuff that I bought, that eighth inch uh, brass strip that I bought, said I wasn't going to use it. Well, that worked out good for this piece right up here. Now I took and drilled two holes in the side of it, plus epoxied it on, plus them two little eye hooks help hold it on, but I believe these two eye hooks are supposed to be in the bottom here, one here and one here. I've got mine in the side, so who's going to know? 
Then I've got these two long pieces on here, and I used the walnut. I had some 1 8 inch square walnut because you're drilling so many holes in this stuff that I don't think that wood that they give you is going to hold up. So I took some little brass strips that they give you. I bent them over on the edge, drilled two little holes, put two little nails in there like they're bolted on. And that's where the uh, oh the, the line comes down from up on the top, passes through the edge of it, and goes all the way down to that one small belay pin. So that's how I did that. All right, coming on up, you can see I got this thing on here. Okay, and there's there's names for all this stuff. I'd have to sit. It'd take me twice as long to do this, but you can see it functions. So when it comes time to hook it up, I can get it in the right position. Now, brass ring and brass ring, how I attach these two together. First thing you got to do is put a notch in this uh, top part so it fits down in here. And then you got to get that correct distance, which I believe this was about two millimeters on me right in here. So I had to make sure I had that up here too, two millimeters. And all I did was, as I took one of these brass rings that fit that, a smaller brass ring to fit the other one, I took uh, this eighth inch, because I cut these about an eighth inch uh, wide, took this eighth inch strip, soldered it together, Came over on the other side, soldered that together, and that's what I wound up with. And then I just filed it down pretty good, so it looks halfway decent. Now from the plans, they want these both to be the same diameter. Well, you would really have to sand this down. I didn't see no cause to do that. You would really have to, to sand down the edge of this one mass part here to get that to the same size as that. I saw no purpose in it. What I done came out really nice. I like it. And then I, uh, I drilled a hole on either side of it, took some more of this brass rod, bent it to a 90, stuck it in there so I could get this on. Okay, that's got two, hoop, two little hoops on, on either end to fit on there. Because I, I am missing like I was talking in them plans, I'm missing that little ring yet. I don't want to put it on there because it would fall off. I will get it on there when it's time. All right. Then we got more hoops, little rings I put on. Don't forget them. And then I cheated. There's a piece of styrene. I did not have a piece of brass that was that small to fit up here. And I wasn't going to go out and buy a brass tube for about three millimeters on here and three millimeters on the other one. I just happen to have a piece of uh, tubing and styrene. I cut that and made it fit. It's going to get painted. Who's going to know? All right. I'll probably go to Davy Jones Locker because I got plastic on my wood ship. All right. Now, for the most part, the four mast is the same thing. These are a little bit shorter. Uh, instead of drilling holes for your shroud lines to come down, this one has holes for the shroud lines to come down and come over to here. This one ties off to a, uh, a little pin. Few differences. You've got to really watch what you're doing. I was trying to make them both together at the same time, and it got too confusing. So I concentrated on my main mast first and then got it done and came over and did my four mast. Now you can see I got to do a lot of sanding because I was handling this a lot and got it kind of dirty and nasty but I got to sand all this up and clean it up. Uh, Alright down here on the bottom of this one. Now them two little pieces once again we go back to this these things here they want you to put them together around there and drill six holes in this 
for belay pins. All right, here's your problem. This is two millimeters wide. You got to drill a one millimeter hole for a belay pin. That gives you a half a millimeter on each side. That's not enough room to wrap a bunch of that string around that belay pin and make it look nice. So I made my own. Instead of going with two millimeters thick, I went with four millimeters thick, okay? That gave me enough room to drill those holes for them belay pins and then have enough room to wrap the rope up around here, you know, to give the illusion that uh, the rope is tied off and hanging on that belay pin. There is just not enough room in them two pieces they give you to do all this. Could I have gone a little bit smaller, maybe, but I think it looks all right. You could have probably went with three millimeters, but what's a millimeter? Human eye really doesn't see that big of a difference. So mine is four millimeters wide. And I just took a piece of this uh, plywood I had right here. I had some extra plywood. Uh, it is about the same thickness as these here. This piece of wood, these two pieces of wood are about the same thickness. I drew a circle on it that I wanted. And by drawing that circle, I had the center. And I just started drilling it out. I started step drilling it till I got to the diameter of this mast and then I took my Dremel with a grind with a uh, sanding tool on it and sanded that circle out and that's what I wound up with right there okay now this little thing here I had to make this that's two rings two brass rings two eye hooks with a little piece of this one millimeter brass rod soldered between them two eye hooks and before you solder the one, second one on you have to get another brass rod with a little hoop on the end of it on there first and then set this you know set the bottom part on solder it and then set it all on there together and then I took a little half U shape little u-shaped piece of this wire and made this part right here so that's how I did that and like again it said it functions okay and it's real long right now what you got here is a boom you got one of your main one of your booms for your sail the bottom boom and this will go into the edge of that bottom boom so I left it long until I determined how deep I want to drill that hole but that's where this goes. Okay, moving up. Got them rings on. Moving on up. Everything is pretty much the same here, except you got less. Here's the two together. You got one, two, three, four. And here you only got one, two, three. Now you do have six counting all these brass rings up here you got six one two three four five six down here you got six one two three four one here with this black piece on it that works and then the other one which is the top connects them two mass parts together and it's got this on there that works and then these two little pieces on here that work okay so I'm hoping this is all being shown up for you. Once again, I got another hook that goes on up here. Don't have it on yet because I don't want it falling off and losing it. So I will make that when the time comes. But this is the difference between the two on the top. Is up here on the main, you only got one of these. On the foremast, you got one there. One there. And these two here okay that's why you need this extra brass ring to catch this this one here this black one but what I'm gonna do here is uh, get this set up so you can get I'll get you a real slow picture I'll get them set up with a some kind of background so you can see what you're dealing with um, 
you got to cut two flat spots in this uh, in both of these masks this was the very first thing I did this determines what everything goes off of as far as your center and the sides and everything is this right here these two flat spots you got to sand in this what I done was pretend this is my uh, mass and I took and I just doesn't matter where you do it at as long as you're in the right distance where it has to be you just take your stick and file a nice flat spot in there okay doesn't matter where it's at on there anywhere you want to spin it just get one flat spot once you got that flat spot you take that flat spot roll it over and I used a clothespin set that flat spot on that clothespin hold it tight down and parallel to that clothespin you file your second one and you will wind up with two parallel flat spots on that mast that's how I did it worked for me everybody's got their own way and like I said a lot of this stuff they show you being all kinds of fancy little hooks you gotta make and all this and that look I just use them little eye hooks drilled them you know I had already had holes in the brass just drilled holes into the mast epoxied them in there and went with it that way now you can use super glue but I don't recommend it because I put these little eye hooks on my bounty I think I had 22 of them on the deck of that ship after about a week I went along and thought I better check them out I took a pair of tweezers and uh, let me get a pair and I started pulling on them eye hooks on that deck and they I think I had 10 of them popped right out with this epoxy this five minute epoxy I make up a little bitty dot of it little bitty spot because it doesn't hold very long enough that I got things set up and I will epoxy them in there little dab of epoxy on the end of it stick it in there and let me tell you those are in there I'm pulling on that and I can't get them to budge make sure you get them in there last thing you want is to do all this rigging and then start popping out on you I'm using five minute epoxy that's my preference stay away from that super glue and I'll probably have a half a dozen guys tell me they used it with no problems well okay you know <laughs> I had problems alright so I'm gonna get this set up and get you a real slow close-up shot of this because I think that's the best way you can see what's involved in this and uh, go from there uh, they are 99 percent done uh, they talk about painting this part white and then the rest of this is all stained and these are either painted white or silver to give it the look of galvanized I am really thinking about from this point to this point painting it white I'm really contemplating doing that uh, this little area right down here will probably be white and then the tip of it up here from here on up will probably be white the rest of it will be stained but I'm really seriously I seen one guy do his blue nose where he stained or he painted this white from here to here and I'm really thinking about doing that instead of just painting these arms and and then hand painting each one of these silver all right let me get this set up so you can get a better view of it okay we'll start here with the uh, bottom of the main mast you can see that silver tape I got on there okay there's all my rings let me uh, just zoom you over here to the bottom of the foremast okay there's the bottom of the foremast and it's got that little thing there like I said slides up and down like I said that's two little brass rings 
trying to do this okay it's two little brass rings and then a hoop on there and a little u-shape on the other part and that's how I did that and there's that little piece I made all right a little bit bigger because I had to drill all them holes in it all right now let me move you on up so hang on here let me get back over here to the main mast move on up slow so I don't make anybody sick okay there's the uh, the main mast and see how I did all that I can move this around while well, you can still see it okay like I said these two little rings here right here I believe they were supposed to be down on the bottom but I can live with that you know seriously who's gonna know all right <clears throat> move up a little bit higher there's that top that I showed you okay get these rings out of the way this little thing here how it moves okay and then there's really nothing to see up on the very top because that's that little piece of styrene which I, I I'm ashamed to say I got styrene on my wooden ship alright now here is the foremast excuse me for that I'm trying to set the camera here's the things I had to do up here okay there's that top piece I made right here okay to connect the two together and you got this one here that works well this one's on the inside of it you got a little one right there on both sides and then you got the bigger one here okay see that one works let me move it up a little bit and then you got this one here on each side and then you had to put an extra ring in here to catch this one alright then once again more brass rings and then we'll move down a little bit and pretty much <clears throat> pretty much this is all the same as the other one only these are a little bit smaller and, and like I said instead of having holes drilled through here they got belay or these little pins up here okay and I don't know if it's showing up you can see this this wire I got right here I drilled that hole all the way through and you can see a little bitty piece of it sticking out on top here and that's to give the illusion of a nut and bolt okay so that's my mast now I have five booms I have to do all this kind of stuff to so I'm not putting these on the ship yet I'm waiting till I get everything done get these stained up sand them down paint them whatever I got to do and uh, then I will take and uh, work on them five booms get them all done and then I can start mounting this stuff all right we're back to the desk uh, and I swear this will be the end of it because I know I looked it's an hour video and I uh, you know what can I say I had a lot to show you, had a lot to do, and I know your wives are probably yelling at you, get off of the computer, feed the dog, take the dog for a walk, you know, I, uh, I've been through it, but, um, you know, I, what's the difference, I could split this up into two half hour videos, or you can watch one hour, so I chose to go this way, uh, okay, here's something important I wanted to tell you, and I forgot, uh, According to the plans, this section of the mast right here is, and it's the same on both of them, 
they tell you that the front edge is straight and the back edge is tapered. I did not do that. I left this mass the same diameter all the way, this section of the mass. I did not taper my back edge because I figure you go trying to put these little brass rings on here or even if you're making them, you're going to have a weird shape there. So I just left it plain. Uh, if you've got one edge that's already straight, you're not going to notice too much that this back edge is not tapered. Now, the top part of the mask, I did taper, okay? And that's why I had trouble. Uh, this little small brass ring that would fit on down here wouldn't fit up here because this was tapered. So, let me tell you, here's how I did mine and I had a little problem doing this. I did the drill method. Okay, I took my cordless drill. I put this mast, this, this top part here, into my drill, turned it on low or medium or whatever you want to, whatever speed you feel safe with, and then just took a piece of sandpaper and held it on there and kept working it. Uh, the tighter you hold it, the more it'll sand. So as I got towards the end, I was squeezing it a little bit tighter. All right. So that's how I sanded this down, how I tapered it. But here was my problem. When I mounted this in that chuck, the jaws on this truck chuck left real bad marks on my dowel. And it wasn't on this one, it was on my main mask. I had marks on there. So try it on a piece of sample wood before you do that because you might have to wrap something around this in order to hold it so you don't that chuck doesn't screw up your wood. I had to take uh, wood putty on the other one and smooth wood putty over on that to uh, get rid of them marks and then just lightly sand it. But uh, be careful with that method. Alright, uh, like I said our video. Okay. Have fun.